A few weeks ago, a left-wing dissident Catholic magazine proclaimed New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez the future of the Catholic Church. Now, I received a lot of emails and calls about this column. My first reaction was, since when does a barely read Catholic periodical get to remake reality or proclaim anyone the future of the Catholic Church? But given AOC's stance on the life issues, such as abortion, it's a rather bold, daring, I'd say crazy declaration. To react, we're joined by the Cardinal Francis George Fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center in Washington, Mary Fiorito. Mary, thank you for being here. She wrote her own column in the National Catholic Register titled, No, AOC is not the future of the Catholic Church. Mary, what did you think when you first read that piece in The Reporter, that op-ed, and what inspired you to pick up pen and respond this way? Well, you know, what grabbed my attention, of course, was the headline, and I think that was the intention of the headline, and I just groaned out loud when I saw it, because, I mean, as Catholics, first of all, we know the only person who is the future of the church, as well as the past and the present of the church, is Jesus Christ. And so um, to give that assignment, if you will, to any other human beings seems to me to be wildly misleading. Um, but secondly, because I know the author of the piece that was in the National Catholic Reporter were former colleagues at the Archdiocese of Chicago, and we've been longtime friends, and um, she was a guest at my wedding, and I felt like I could um, engage her argument, which really, when you read through the story, um, the mm -hmm. headline didn't really mm -hmm. reflect what she was trying to get across, unfortunately, and I said that to her. I said, I think you're the victim of a wildly misleading headline, and, um, you know, she, I think to some extent, she, she agreed with that, but what she was trying to say was that the the verbal attack that Alexandria Casio Cortez came under from a fellow congressperson um, in Florida? I mean, he really did use some vulgar language, apparently, to describe yeah. her and to refer yeah. to her. I know, I heard and it. I, know he I heard it. Yeah, I know there's some dispute, and a reporter from the Hill says, "No, I was in with an earshot," and. Um, and whether or not he was mm -hmm. directing it at her. And again, I don't really want to get into the weeds too much on that because we don't really know. Only the two of them, I think, know what the exact story no, is. Well, but uh, I, the, the other thing with this issue that always, Mary, strikes me, uh, a member of AOC squad, uh, Taleb, Representative Taleb, called the president a certain expletive that begins with the F word, and nobody oh, in that squad, including AOC, raised so much as a, an utterance of disgust or outrage. So this all right. strikes me. This is politics. It's nasty. It's been so since the founding of the republic. What strikes me in this larger effort of trying to cast AOC as the future of the church is an attempt to blur pro-life issues, mainly abortion and euthanasia for political purposes. Is that what's happening here, trying to trade off other issues where you might have some uh, connection with Catholic social teaching to disrupt and dislocate these issues that sit at the very top of the moral hierarchy. Is that what we're seeing right. here? I think so. I mean, we've seen this for some time, right? The, the absolute abuse of Cardinal Joseph Bernadine's consistent ethic of life. I, I worked for Cardinal Bernadine as his pro-life spokesperson for many years. Um, he was quoted in on more than one occasion of saying, if anyone is trying to use the consistent ethic to say that we don't hold people's feet to the fire over abortion, they are misusing the ethic, and I abhor when people do that. So he was quite firm that no, the issues are not all equal. They are linked, but they are not all equal. And we even see in Evangelium Vitae, the Holy Father addressed right. issues, you know, along a consistent ethic life spectrum. But the left right. kind of seized on that, really attempted to misinterpret it, um, and they use it as sort of like a checklist. Well, if I'm against the death penalty and, you right. know, um, uh, I'm for migrant rights, that somehow means it gives me a pass on abortion. And Cardinal Bernadine himself said, you absolutely get no pass on abortion because there are some issues that are simply fundamental. Um, you know, I, I paraphrase John Paul II. He, he said this in Crossing the Threshold of Hope. You know, your other rights don't mean a whole lot if you're not alive to enjoy any of them. So right. Um, right. You, you have to look at um, the way we treat the most, the most vulnerable people because you know, you certainly can't tell me. I mean, look at the way the elderly have been treated even within this COVID crisis, right? Um, we have yeah. learned about terrible neglect of uh, elderly people um, who may or may not have family who are being watchful and the yeah. astounding death rates and abandonment rates of the well, elderly. Um, 
Yeah, and abortion, and abortion being designated as an essential service in many states and localities, oh, which is just well, in, in, mind-boggling. But oh, well, uh, in, but in I, Illinois, I have to, where I live, yeah, we opened yeah, it up a new ahead, Planned Mary. Parenthood clinic. Yeah, in Illinois, where I live, wow. we opened up in the middle of the pandemic a brand new Planned Parenthood abortion clinic located right on the mm -hmm. Illinois Wisconsin border, um, where even we, we have now publicly funded abortions in Illinois, so that even women coming from the state of Wisconsin can now come to our brand new abortion clinic that opened during a pandemic uh, to receive free wow. abortions. Um, it's astounding. Well, I've got to get astounding. to this, Mary, before we run out of time. Uh, AOC promotes all these big social issues, justice issues, rather, uh, considered dogma by the Catholic left. Now, a few days after she was all but canonized in that uh, reporter column, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez had this to say on Instagram about a truly canonized saint, Damien of Molokai. This was her on Instagram criticizing his statue at the U.S. Capitol. Watch. Even when we select figures to tell the stories of colonized places, it's the colonizers and settlers whose stories are told and virtually no one else. Check out Hawaii's statue. It's not Queen Liliuokai of Hawaii. It's Father Damien. This isn't to mm -hmm. litigate each and every individual statue, but to point out the patterns that have emerged among the totality of them in who we are taught to deify in our nation's capital, virtually all men, all white, and mostly both. This is what patriarchy and white supremacist culture looks like. What do you make of that and, and AOC's understanding of Catholicism and the self-giving yeah. sacrifice that usually accompanies sainthood? Well, I had a very funny uh, tweet uh, when I posted my article. Uh, a, a person I don't know tweeted to me, AOC needs to read the CCC, meaning the, the Catechism <laughs> of the Catholic Church. And, you know, yeah. she's, I, 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 don't understand um, actually definitively whether or not she's even still a practicing Catholic. I can't quite mm -hmm. seem to track that down factually. I get the impression right. she is not, but she she is sadly one of these Catholics that came out of the really bad catechism of the 1980s and early 90s, where she knows just mm -hmm. enough to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. And the difference between St. Damien of Molokoy and then, you know, people who might have gone as colonizers is that he didn't go to colonize the people of Hawaii. He went to serve them. And he went right. knowing it was, was a death sentence. He went, he volunteered to go. His bishop said, I cannot ask you to do this or under obedience because it is a death sentence. He knew that going in. He went because he wanted to lay down his life for those people in the imitation of Christ. I mean, in the same way, Blessed Engelmar in Germany went into the typhoid right. barracks in Dachau. Right. He knew it was a death sentence when he walked in. He was not going in to, um, you know, to be a, a force to colonize them or to better them in some way. He went to die for them, and that's exactly what he did. And she did, one of her staffers kind of tried to walk it back a little bit and say, well, you know, she, she really wasn't um, condemning what, uh, you know, St. Damien tried to do for the people, but, you know, we need mm -hmm. to be aware mm -hmm. of how this represents the people of Hawaii. But the irony there is that the people of Hawaii were the ones who voted for the Father right. Damien statue to be yes. sent to represent. I mean, it, it, it was the people of that, that state themselves made that statue a gift um, you know, right. to, to the statuary hall. And, and so, you know, she's dismissing the actual, you know, will of the people, you know, which is what a democracy is supposed to be, um, right. and apparently telling them they chose the wrong person because they, they well, chose the other, a man, you know, who was European. The other, yeah, the other reason I think that people reacted in such a negative way to that is AOC also tried to d frame Father Damien as part of white supremacy and racism. This is the opposite. This is Catholic and Christian love of neighbor and self-giving brotherhood to the extreme. That's what mm -hmm. St. Malachi, uh, St. Damien represents. That's what Mother Henriette de Lille here in New Orleans represents. She was a woman, a free woman of color who founded this order to educate slave children and children who had been recently freed when no one else cared for them. That is the depiction of not feminism or, or white supremacy or black supremacy. It's called brotherhood and love. AOC should learn it. Now, the Democratic national, uh, Democratic presidential candidate, rather, Joe Biden, has chosen Kamala Harris as his running mate. I wanted to play this for you, Mary, before we ran out of time. This is Harris uh, discussing AOC on The View back in January of uh, 2019. Listen to this. 
Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's new darling of the party. She officially has more Twitter followers than Nancy Pelosi. She was on 60 Minutes this weekend proudly calling herself a radical. Do you agree that she could possibly, in this ideology of the socialist left, could splinter your party? No. Uh, you know, I think that um, she is challenging the status quo. I think that's fantastic. Is AOC mm -hmm. the thought leader of the new Democratic Party, Mary, in your estimation? Well, I'm, I'm worried for the Democratic Party if she is, because, you know, this is interesting. I, I have um, I happen to have a close personal friend who serves in Congress. I know multiple congressional staffers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was talking about this with one of him and uh, one of them rather. And he said to me, listen, being a legislator is hard work, like the actual work of it, you know, marking up bills, yeah. reading them, negotiating across the aisle. If, you know, to be a legislator is a vocation and it involves a lot of unglamorous very nitty-gritty work where you really have to have a knowledge of issues and you know this person's reflection was that it seems like the squad for example th they want to be elected to congress to be you know celebrity personalities they don't seem to be interested in sort of the day-to-day -day work of being legislators we will leave it there you can read mary fiorito's column no aoc is not the future of the catholic church it's at ncregister.com thank you again Mary. you're welcome great to be with you thank you raymond Thank <laughs> you.